the dawn, a crowd flowed over London Bridge. So many I had not thought death had undone so many. With haunting images of a sunken Ganga River, the falling cities of Europe, and dead soldiers crossing the London Bridge, the wasteland evoked the emptiness felt by a generation living in the aftermath of war. They were a lost generation, and they were making art in a kind of void, I think, and uh, oftentimes as a sort of whistling in the dark. For Americans writing in Paris, T.S. Eliot's poem was proof that great literature could come from among their own. The modern masterpiece had been created by a Midwesterner living in Paris. Complimenta, you bitch. I am racked by the seven jealousies, Pound declared after reading Eliot's poem. A similar response came after Pound finished a chapter from another of his discoveries. Well, Mr. Joyce, I reckon you're a damn fine writer. That's what I reckon. After seven years of ten-hour days and his eyes strained from a debilitating bout of glaucoma, Irishman James Joyce was nearing completion of his gargantuan novel, Ulysses. Yet his much-anticipated manuscript was effectively banned from American publication when a New York court judged a chapter obscene. Finding no commercial publishers willing to take the risk, Joyce eagerly accepted Sylvia Beach's offer to publish Ulysses through Shakespeare and Company. I give him everything I can spare, Beach wrote one financier. It is up to all of us who want the most important book of today to appear to come to the help of its author. Financing the task put constant pressure on Beach's small bookstore, notwithstanding Joyce's reckless personal spending. When funds were not available to complete the printing of the book, Beach charged admission to a staged reading of Ulysses. and gentlemen, it seemed to me that I had been transported into a country far away from this country, into an age remote from this age, that I stood in ancient history. Yes, and his heart was going like mad, and yes, I said yes, I will, yes. <laughs> Fervent applause by over 250 of the Parisian literati followed each section read that night. They realized, as Beach did, that the man who blushed before them had changed the course of modern fiction. Oh, he was poor, obscure, no one had heard of him. Rolled on the floor, on the floor, with a pain in his eyes, and found fame, he did. Ulysses, Yule Book, published to every people, even in Earth, and what became of him? Fame became of him. Smuggling copies into America as the complete works of William Shakespeare, Sylvia Beach proudly placed her own copy of Ulysses in the window of Shakespeare and Company. As one customer saw it, it was displayed like the flag of freedom on the left bank. Another customer was drawn to the photographs of James Joyce, T.S. Eliot, Ezra Pound, and other authors that lined the walls of her bookstore. The photographs all looked like snapshots, and even the dead writers looked as though they had really been alive. A newcomer to Paris and to his craft, young Ernest Hemingway had little idea his picture would one day hang among them. <laughs> 